using glass on epoxy countertops? What? Yeah, that's right, I finally got it done. Those of you who know me know that I use a lot of resin chips and I have a video on that. And as promised, here's the glass on epoxy countertops. Join us, it's fun, really easy. Let's go and get started. Okay, part two, real glass on epoxy countertops. This is our research and finding the pros and the cons of using either real glass or resin chips made from our leftover epoxy. Hello, I'm Deborah Wakefield with Deborah's Diddy's Artistic Stone. So this is a glass, like we said, and I have glass cutters. Pretty simple. They break pretty easy. So I can get little pieces, save some bigger pieces. Pretty simple. This should go pretty quickly. Okay. Um, before I cup any more though, I do have to mix, mix up my resin. Okay, on the resin chip table, and let me show you which one I'm talking about. Okay, that one that we did. Okay, that one, I did not tape the edges when I did it. It's in the other video. I did not tape the edges when I did that. Now the whole purpose of that, me doing the resin chips, was because I really liked the idea of just using... Um, like I said, the stuff that we normally throw away, all my drifting things and stuff, that's what I use for this table. Now, um, I, so, so I did not do anything more than three ounces per square foot on that resin. I did not tape the edges. I did not tape the edges because I didn't want to have to use more than that. Now I will say, um, just as we're going to do with this one, if you do tape the edges, there's not just going to end up using a little bit more epoxy. Um, and it does create it, um, well, it just makes it easier to not have to sand quite so much. Um, even though resin sands really, really well, and that's the nice thing about it, is obviously they're not all going to be perfectly even, so you do have to sand a little bit. So if you do tape your edges, dam up the, the epoxy a little bit, you're not going to lose any, so it'll be less less sanding. That's totally a choice, that's totally up to you. Um, I did not sand uh, or um, dam my edges, and I did very little sanding. So um, either way, it's 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 totally a choice that you can make. On this one, I am going to dam the edges. The reason being is this is glass, so we're not going to be able to um, sand it down. So sand, it, sand the glass down to level. So I want to put an edge on this with tape so that it's all going to be perfectly level when I'm done because we're using flat glass. So I will be using probably six, I'll let you know for sure, probably six ounces per square foot up to eight ounces really depending upon how deep I'm going to want it. The glass isn't very thick. As you can see so yeah I probably yeah it'll probably be about six six ounces I'm gonna try six ounces and we'll see how we deal with that okay but I just wanted to explain that why I was damming this one and I did not damn the other one okay let's get started with the epoxy we're doing the second part of my research um, I have been asked many times and I've showed this in my other videos too because I'm doing a whole series. This picture here has come to me from six or seven different people. I think this is also on the Insider. Um, people have asked how to make this look. And I started a video um, last week on how I do this look with resin chips. What I call resin chips are the pieces that, that I peel off of the plastic after I am done. Um, pouring something. All that stuff that runs over the edge, it goes out on a piece of plastic. I, I save all of it. You have to watch that video to understand what I've done with it. And then I've made this Terezo looking table. Okay. Now the reason I started all this is due to that picture because that is actually glass. And I've been asked, can you make this look? Well, yes, we can. We can do it with the glass. Okay, so today I'm going to make that same Trezzo look um, 
but I'm going to do it with glass. Okay, this is colored glass and it's um, flat. Okay, so today's table is going to be glass. It's flat, nice and flat. And um, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did with the Terezzo table. And then we're going to find the pros and the cons to all of this, okay? Already, you probably already know one of the things that we're going to have to deal with when it comes to an edge. And that is, or, or when we deal with glass, and that is the edge. So we already know that we're, we're going to have issues with the edge, with glass. To make it look all the same, that's what we're going to deal with. With the resin chips, if you did not see that video, you have to go see the video because it is so cool. And the edges are the pros. I'm always trying to find the pros and the cons to all of this. And having resin chips is definitely a pro on these kind of tables. But that doesn't mean we can't use glass. And we're going to use this and we're going to figure it out. I've got some ideas. Now, I've done glass before. They have a glass. I've done lots of these, and this is glass. By the way, this has got to be, I haven't weighed it. I need to weigh this. It's heavy. It's like five pounds or so. I mean, it's really heavy, and it's glass. It's mirrored glass, and it is flat. This was actually done with fire glass, okay? And it is a quality piece, let me tell you. And it's absolutely beautiful. But now I have to put it into a table and make it all come together. Okay, so that's what we're going to do on this table. After I get done with this table, I am going to do another glass table. And it's going to be crushed glass. Because this is actually um, crushed glass that has been... Um, grinded down. The glass has been grinded down. There's factories out there that makes these and they're beautiful and they use crushed glass. They recycle, which is even that much better. Recycle glass. They just crush it. They put it in a cement mix and then they pour it into a mold. And this is done in, you know, big quantities. And they put it into a mold. Then after it cures, they take it out of the mold and then they take it and they do exactly what I'm going to try to do with resin, um, a resin table, and then they grind it. Now I've done this with um, cement and glass and stone. Works wonderful. Just have not done it with resin yet. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm doing all of this for knowledge. I really want to know if we can do it. I've been asked if we can do it. And so I want to put every one of these to the test. And then we can figure out, is it feasible? You know, is it feasible for those of us who do countertops to do this? Is it going to be productive? Is it going to be cost effective? What are the pros? What are the cons? You know, um, when we deal with glass, and that is the edge. So we already know that we're, we're going to have issues with the edge, with glass. To make it look all the same, that's what we're going to deal with. With the resin chips, if you did not see that video, you have to go see the video because it is so cool. And the edges are the pros. I'm always trying to find the pros and the cons to all of this. And having resin chips is definitely a pro on these kind of tables. But that doesn't mean we can't use glass. Now, I've done glass before. They have a glass. I've done lots of these, and this is glass. By the way, this has got to be, I haven't weighed it. I need to weigh this or so. I mean, it's really heavy, and it's glass. It's mirrored glass, and it is flat. This was actually done with fire glass, okay? And it is a quality piece, let me tell you. And it's absolutely beautiful. But now I have to put it into a table and make it all come together. Okay, so that's what we're going to do on this table. After I get done with this table, I am going to do another glass table, and it's going to be crushed glass, because this is actually um, crushed glass that has been um, 
grinded down. The glass has been grinded down. There's factories out there that makes these and they're beautiful and they use crushed glass. They recycle, which is not much better. Recycle glass, they just crush it. They put it in a mix and then they pour it into a mold. And this is done in, you know, big quantities. And they put it into a mold then after it cures, they take it out of the mold and then they take it and they do exactly what I'm going to try to do with resin, um, a resin table, and then they grind it. Now I've done this with um, cement and glass and stone. Works wonderful. Just have not done it with resin yet. So I'm going to do that. I really want to know if we can do it. I've been asked if we can do it. And so I want to put every one of these to the test and then we can figure out, is it feasible? You know, is it feasible for those of us who do countertops to do this? Is it going to be productive? Is it going to be cost effective? What are the pros? What are the cons? You know, um, and when I'm done with them all, then I'm going to do a little blurb on what I found to be um, the pros and the cons. And then you guys can take it and do with it what you want. Meaning maybe what might be beneficial to me may not be beneficial to somebody else. Maybe you don't have the tools, maybe you don't have the space for it, whatever. We're gonna find out what we need to do this and make it productive and to see if that it, it can be productive. So I have my epoxy mixed up and I'm just going to use the pearl from Stone Coat. I like pearl. Um, number one, I don't want it really white. And I like pearl because, as we know, resin will amber a slightly. So if you don't use white white, you won't have any problems. And pearl is the answer for that. Now I did mix up six ounces per square foot. And I did make, well, I actually, <laughs> I actually mixed up eight, but I took out some, I'm just gonna use six. For now, I have a lot of projects going on if I need it. But if I do end up needing more, we'll be able to see together. And um, if I need it, then I'll have it. So that one's pearl. And this one is just white. just to break the metallic down. I don't break it down, but just make it doesn't make it look as metallic. And actually this works quite well. I did not take away my pearl look, so, or the off-white color is what's really gonna make it more. That's better. And I'll do the same thing with this one. So like I said, it doesn't take the metallic away, but it gives it a look that's, that I'm looking for. Not quite so metallic, not quite so shiny. The pearl is easier to knock down. Well, that does good. I like that. Now, you may notice I haven't got the edges done, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to make you watch me. So I will be doing that quickly and be right back. Okay. So I have this on there. I burnished it on there. You can see just a smidge on the edge. <clears throat> Pull the tape. You can see how that I 
you can see that it's gripping very well. It's coming down. I'm definitely going to take some of our uh, flakes and just a little bit at a time. I actually leave it in my hand and blow it on there. Not minding just the way that looks, but we'll see. We'll see. how flat look how flat that is and for this table you're not gonna be able to tell the difference um, crushed glass one and I think we'll probably be able to do it for the crushed glass too we'll see maybe this one's a good one Remember this orange glass that I was just raving over that I absolutely loved? I found a, uh, the, the paint skin <laughs> that I had that exact same color. Matter of fact, it's even got the yellows in it. I was so excited. Look at that. Exact same color. I've already done the surface here. So we're just going to put a nice orange one right. My goodness, that works so well. If anybody needs to know how to make acrylic skins, I can tell you. The blue one with some yellow. Okay, guys. Today I'm going to put clear coat on my glass and I just want to get a close up now that it's cured just to show you a little bit of the edges. Not bad, but there is definitely an edge. So we're going to clear coat it today. And the other thing is, if you can see without the clear coat, like this green one, how that really shines, sometimes the clear coat will take that shine away. So we're going to see if it does. It really all depends upon the glass, but that's really got quite a bit of shine. So we'll, we'll see. Okay. All right, this is after I poured it. So we still have edges, which is pretty much what I assumed would happen. But it's really just on the edges, the ones that are closest to the edge, which makes sense. Because the ones in the middle, they're covered up pretty darn good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the light off. And we'll look at it from that perspective because what you're going to see, what I think you're going to see, is how all of these edge ones here and down here, they're going to be the ones that I'll show. But really, oh and then the glossy, remember? I was worried about the glossy. It's still nice and glossy. So all right, I'm going to shut the light off and we're going to see what it looks like. Okay, now in the, the light off, now you can see that edge on the glass one. And that makes sense. So, this will definitely be one that we'll have to um, dam the edges. 
to get that to not be like that. Because even if I put another coat on, you're still going to have that issue. Um, so we will have to down the edges tomorrow when we do it. So you can tell just the edge ones. But then see what that does to the edge is it causes all of those ridges on those the edge, which you do not want. Um, I'll come back here in a few hours and I'll soften that out with some alcohol. But but just showing you that this, you know, this is one of the things if you was to do glass like this that we needed to see. Okay, guys. So a year later. <laughs> Thank goodness you guys are just watching this video and you do it all in one time. But honestly, this is about a year later. Hey guys, welcome Abby. Abby and Debbie. Hey baby, are you saying hi? Can you say hi? Oh, say hi. Say hi. Um, anyway, this is a year later and um, we are doing the pros and the cons of the glass versus resin chips. No, you're not taking my hair down. I know you want to take my hair down. <laughs> she loves to take my little ponytail down. So <laughs> anyway, sorry, Freak squirrel. Um, hi, hi honey. Okay, you want to see something funny? Take my hair down. That's what she wanted. <laughs> We're doing the pros and the cons of glass versus chips. Now, I did this in a terrazzo look just simply because I was asked at the time if I could do a terrazzo look, a terrazzo look, and I figured that it would be a good time to do it. So, that's the only reason I used the colors that I did. You could do this in any colors that you wanted to. So, let's do the pros and the cons of of this. Obviously, the pros to doing resin chips, no, is the fact that I do resin chips. I just take the, the drippings off of my old countertops. I pile them in a box and when I need them, I use them for my resin tables. And that's money, money, money saved. So you can't beat that in my opinion, okay? Um, if you haven't seen the video of me doing that, go look on my channel, it's there. So. To me that is a huge pro another pro to doing the resin chips is the fact that resin chips resin sands very well so i can get it level and then i can put a flood coat on it and i can be done as long as you get your edges done right that is not the case with glass glass cannot be sanded it can be grinded i know someone's going to make that comment and the next part of this, the last part of this whole glass versus uh, chips and all that kind of stuff is um, I'm going to do crushed glass. I've already done it. I've already done the video. I already know the answer. And can resin, can you use a grinder on resin and what will it do to it? And actually I was quite shocked with the results of that. And um, like really quite shocked of, of what happened with that. So I guess you'll have to watch that next one. And I don't think I use these colors, but anyway, um, so the glass can't be sanded in resin. So you would definitely damn your edges is your very best way to get this look. And by the way, um, if I remember right on this one, I don't think I did damn the edges. And I think I, I mentioned, it really is a smarter way to do it. Damn your edges. Put your uh, your epoxy in here, let it set up before you pull, and you're just gonna be better off. But I didn't do that, so obviously you can do that too, but it, it probably would be a smarter way to do it. So the same thing with the glass. Now, with the glass, it's flat glass, all the same depth or thickness, so it went really easy, no problems. The only time you run into problems and I don't know if the video picks it up or not. And I need another coat on this, by the way. I, I wanted to do this video before I might put my final coat on here so that you can see. There are some of these on the very edge, close to my edge, that doesn't want, you know, because your epoxy's pulling over, right? It's flowing over. So it, on the back side of your glass, it's not quite level. So I'm gonna have to do another coat on this. I will tape the edges. 
I will make sure it gets pretty thick before I pull my edges. And um, also the edges on your glass piece, obviously we cannot put glass on the edge. It's just not going to work. So I did the same edge on here using the resin chips, the really, 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 really thin resin chips that I use as I did this one. Once again, if you haven't seen it, you need to go check that out. But look, you, you wouldn't know the difference. It looks just the same from an, even close up. I wouldn't know the difference between this and this glass piece because it's small and it, it just looks like it's embedded in there. So that is the way that you take care of your edges. And, um, but yeah, so that, that's the only, that's the only thing about this that is different than this is this, this can't be sanded. This one can. So this is going to need another coat on it. There's a piece over here. that's really, really high. And it's once again, it's on the very edge where it starts pulling it off on the back side of that glass. It wants to, to slough off. So I should have let it thicken up quite a bit more. And um, anyway, so that's, that's it. That's the only thing that I have to say. Now, cost wise, this is the chips on this one were free. I used the drippings off of another countertop, painted them the way I wanted to on the back side, put them in there and there we go. So I don't think you can beat that price. Glass is more expensive. If you're not doing a really huge one, or even if you are, if somebody really wants it, it can be done. They're beautiful. And I'm telling you guys, this is really beautiful. You can still see the shine of the glass. You can see through it. It's beautiful. Now, weight wise, same thing with these that I did. This is resin chips, totally 100% resin chips, very lightweight very pretty looks like glass people think that it's glass um, you can even kind of see through it i don't know if you can kind of see that and this is glass okay this was glass very heavy and this is a really not that you guys can tell but you should do one you should do one that's this glass and then just one that's resin and there's a huge difference in just the weight so if think about that if you're doing a huge countertop wow, that's going to get heavy. Okay. So now if it's in place, not a big deal, but definitely something you'd want to think about if somebody asks you for a glass countertop like this, um, definitely doable, very easy to do. Um, but I, I, you would probably want to do it in place because it's going to take a lot of people to move it. Um, but they do that with granite. So you know, so weight would be an issue as well. Another issue, let's say you were going to do one of these with a big, like a U shape and you couldn't get it in the house and you needed to cut it, uh, might have a little issue there. So, you know, it has its cons as far as even if you did a piece and it needed a little trimming on the backside, I absolutely hate it when that happens. But if, you know, if you had to trim the backside or whatever, um, not that it can't be done, but it, it would be a little more difficult than just cutting through resin. But all in all, guys, obviously it can be done. It's absolutely beautiful. And it was just kind of fun. I, I really wanted, the whole point of this was to see if us countertop people, if it was feasible for us to do this. And, and I do see that it, it would be beautiful in, in certain circumstances and really not that expensive to do um, in a small situation. Larger countertop um, might be a little different story, but it's still, it's still absolutely doable. Like I said um, before, I have actually made um, a, a table out of a mold. Same concept as this. I just made a mold. You put your epoxy in there, you put your glass in there and clear coat it and you got a beautiful table. You know, you don't have to use these colors. Like I said, I chose these colors because somebody asked me to do those colors, but um, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. So when you're talking molds, uh, which is what this is, the sky's the limit. I mean, you can put anything in a mold with your epoxy and glass and epoxy go well together. And that table's not been taken out of the mold yet. When it does, maybe I'll put it in this video or maybe not, it might be a year later. <laughs> but um, so, you know, that's a, that's, that's a no brainer. It, doing glass and epoxy is, is really simple. So we already know that that's, that's the easiest way to do it, the best way to do it. Anybody can do that. Um, I just wanted to see if we could apply it to our countertops because we don't have all of that. 
So there's your answer. And really you guys, I have pros and I have cons to everything. You have to decide whether or not that's something that you guys can do. It's doable and it looks beautiful. And if this was, a, if this was in place, this would be a fun countertop to do. Really fun, really fast, glass breaks easy. It, it really is doable. So I, I, if, if, if anybody ever asked me to do one of these in their home, if it was in place, I'd go for it. I'd go for it in a heartbeat. It, it's fast and easy. And um, you know, I would just make sure I got my edges good and definitely dam it before I actually pour my, my clear coat on it. Other than that, that's it. So definitely doable, a little more expensive than this route has a few things to overcome on this one, such as your sanding. Okay guys, so that's the end of this one finally. Go onto my channel and watch the next one, which is I, I used crushed glass to, to make one and the results were phenomenal. Shocking to me. I, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect and um, yeah. So I'm gonna put another flood, flood coat on this Maybe I'll put a picture, maybe I won't. I think we kind of know everything we need to know. And guys, if you do this, as I always say, please send me a picture. Let me know how it worked out, especially if you do it in place. I would love to see it in place, a uh, one done in place. And use whatever colors. I mean, like I said, this is really wild. <laughs> this was a Terezo look, that's why I did this. But I mean, I can see this in just, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, natural tone colors, which is kind of my favorite. You know, something else is I've also done, and you can do on a countertop, and if you do, it's always best to use use a rock edge. I love rock edges because rock edges, if you have a rock edge, you can do anything to the top because you don't have to worry about doing the same thing to your sides. And I've taken um, um, agates, I guess they're agates. I've taken, um, it wasn't a countertop, it was a table, and I put these agates in it and you lay the agates in there. Same concept as your glass. They can be done and they're absolutely beautiful. I did one in a mold um, for a backsplash. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Uh, the issue with something like this was if you were to do it on wood instead of in a mold, um, these are definitely, whoops, definitely different thicknesses. So that would be something you really gonna have to kind of work with. There is kind of a way to battle that. If I were to do this on wood and not in a mold, what you would do is you'd put your base color, you know, your thick, your, your epoxy, the off-white color here, and I would let it get, I would dam my edges and I would let it get really thick, really thick. And then you can play with the heavier ones. You can really embed in there. And then you could put in your next one where you don't embed it quite as far. I've done that. It's a lot of playing with it. It can be done. And, and I'm telling you guys, they, they really are beautiful. But these to me are the prettiest if um, you do it in a mold. So we won't even talk about the expense of that because that is really expensive, but they do turn out really beautiful. Same concept. Okay guys, please hit the like and subscribe. Once again, Thank you guys for following me. Thank you for your patience. I am getting these out. Um, like I said, it's been a year since this one, but I'm finally in my shop. I'm getting everything done and I'm just kicking out a bunch of the ones that I just didn't have endings to. So if um, I look like I'm wearing the same clothes each and every time, it's because I'm kicking out about five a day just doing the endings. <laughs> so we're gonna get this done. I know why people have teams to do this. Maybe someday I'll get there. Till then guys, get some epoxy, get your creative minds working, practice, practice, turn your sticky into stone. See you later. Okay. Remember I was gonna show you really closely. Here's a good shot. Resin chips.
how fun is that? And then on to the other table, which is resin chips. So as far as variety, I think it both offers good variety, good colors in both, good depth in the colors. Okay, resin chip platter. Looks like glass, yeah. And then on to the real glass one. That real glass is kind of hard to beat. That's beautiful. Okay, glass versus resin chips. Catch my video, it's out now. And yes, the edges have to be done one more time. <laughs> That's not the point of this.